two weeks ago, we disassembled the entire seal system for the propeller shaft of our sailboat. Yeah, this boat. It's a really different system with lots of parts and bearings and retainers and everything. So this week, we are finally gonna give maintenance, clean all the parts, replace the parts that need to be replaced, and finally, we're gonna have a boat that can float again. Not that we're gonna float this week, but we're gonna have a boat that if we throw on the water, it floats. That's pretty good. I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And together we are on the mission of bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Monday for a new episode. Let's move this beast. The idea is to clean all the pieces today and tomorrow we are going to take to Reginaldo. Yeah. That's the plan. The plan is that we are going to some of the pieces are painted and have a little bit of rust, just superficial rust, but as we open the entire system, we're gonna sandblast the places that have rust and we're gonna paint, instead of black, we're gonna paint probably white, so we can see any oil leak or anything, it's much easier to maintain and to see and to make sure that it's all good. Cheers. Are you ready for this? Yeah. That's it, the system is out, that's the entire system. This shaft goes inside of this pipe and this pipe goes inside of the tunnel of the hull. And other than that, all the other pieces are cat catalogued here in each bag with names and everything. So the next step is to properly clean all of this and to decide what we want and what we don't want to paint. Let's keep working. Ready to be painted. The plan for today? The plan of course changed as always. <laughs> we were supposed to paint the engine room today. We are gonna do it later. But first we are gonna go to the shop that we've been working this week. Uh, I'm not sure if we showed you these images already. But we took all the pieces from the propeller shaft seal and took to Reginaldo shop. That's our friend that has a sand blasting machine. And he sand blasts all the parts that are painted to properly paint because if you sand blast then the paint is gonna last for a long time and we sand blasted he gave two coats of epoxy to protect and now the third coat we decide instead of painting the third coat we are gonna assemble the system and then paint the third coat because then we paint all the holes for the screws and the screws and protect everything because it's not stainless steel it's carbon steel so it's gonna be safer so now I'm just trying to organize all the pieces and bearings and retainers because we're gonna go to his shop and assemble this beast. Making ourselves at home? Yeah. These are all the electronics that are gonna go on the panel that is not gonna be built on the top of here. So it's here so we can do a mock-up soon. Soon. So now we need to figure out how to put this together and Reginald is arriving to help us because he has more experience and we are gonna work together and learn with him. But we studied this for over a month already, <laughs> so... Better than just studying, we disassembled the whole thing, so I think we are prepared.
Ready? Need to be. Nervous? No. <laughs> What's next? We need to wash this piece because we have some still some grease inside. We're gonna wash, dry, and then we're gonna assemble. What's next? Next. We need to disassemble the entire thing. <laughs> we did one mistake. There is one spacer that needs to go after the shaft. That means we need to take all that apart. But that was a good learning experience. So now we take all that apart. We send the shaft to the turner so he can clean better the shaft, both ends. And when it comes back in like two days from the turner, we slide the shaft and then we assemble everything because the spacer is supposed to hold the shaft in place and with the spacer inside, there is no way to slide the shaft. And the idea is to assemble everything everything that we can hear so we can put the oil inside and everything? Yes, we're gonna even put the oil inside and then we just slide in place on the boat and then we just add the grease, grease around and that's it.
So the reason why we're taking all these apart is because we did one big mistake. This little spacer is really tight. We need to try to send inside because it's not going through. At some point when we took off or I don't know, I'm not sure, it deformed on the inside a little bit and it's not going through easily. This is what stops the shaft from coming this way. So we need to install the shaft, install this spacer, then we can install this bearing and the spacer is gonna be right here. So it's gonna compress all together with these, these bolts and it's gonna hold the shaft in place. believe in Murphy's Law? I do believe 159%. It's just amazing. Every single time works on us. Every single time. There's not one time that we don't need to say that. At this point we thought, we believe it, we were ready <laughs> to give the last coat of epoxy paint and bring the shaft back home. Nice. Yeah. The, the shaft <laughs> being in Reginaldo's shop for over two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, we've been working a lot on the shaft. And the reason for that is because we've been studying the system. We tried to assemble until this point and we realized that this spacer needs to go back out and, and you know we go back and forth until we were confident that we actually knew the system, until we actually gave maintenance to everything, replaced all the parts we needed. We, we need thought. To do, yeah, we thought. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be honest, there is one not small, one big part that we didn't <laughs> replace. It's maybe the biggest part of the system we didn't replace. The bearing. The big oh. bearing. And the reason why we didn't replace this bearing is because... We didn't find the same one to buy. Yeah, we thought we had the same one on the boat because we had one on the boat as a spare part for this system. But when we opened up the system, we realized that they were not exactly the same. They, even though they have the same dimensions and the, it's, it feels like the same bearing, it's not. What's the difference? The one that was installed, there, there was a, a housing on around sealed and the the one that we had on the boat there are four holes on it yeah the reason for that is probably because the one we have on the boat is to be used in a situation where the grease or the oil can move freely from inside to the outside of the bearing so that means that the bearing is inside of a whole you know grease or oiled system and on our case we cannot use that because the housing for the bearing on the system is basically two flanges that hold the bearing, but the center part of the bearing is exposed. That means that the first spin of the shaft, we would lose grease or oil from inside of the system, and that doesn't make sense. There is also another problem. Yeah, that's the one thing that didn't make sense for us, that we didn't understand on the system. We understand the whole thing. It's not that we don't understand, we don't agree. <laughs> yeah, let's put it this way. A bearing need to have oil or grease at least as far as we know, a bearing needs to have oil or grease. If it runs dry, it's gonna wear really quick. And when we open up the system, the bearing had just a tiny bit of oil and a little bit of fresh water. And that's not good at all. And the reason for this oil, I believe, is because it leaked from the system, because you have oil from the system, a retainer, a bearing, and a, not a retainer. And if this retainer is not good, the oil from the system came to the bearing, but that means that the the bearing was dry, there was no grease inside of the bearing 
and if the bearing is sealed that means how can you apply more grease on the system it doesn't make sense and maybe that's the reason why it was making so much noise because when we went out with the boat for the first time we received a lot of comments that even on video you could listen to all the noise of the system and I believe it was because the bearing was running dry and that's no good it wasn't gonna last for too long if we keep using like this luckily it was still for 22 years <laughs> yeah. yeah at least it was like on the boat yard it wasn't yeah. otherwise <laughs> the boat would sink yeah. no I'm joking it wouldn't sink yeah so basically the reason why I'm saying all that the reason why I'm explaining this entire situation is because I need to tell you that when we clean the bearing it seems okay when we degrease and regrease the bearing it seems like no it's turning perfectly we try we try we try we install on the shed on the on the tunnel it was working fine and we were like if we have no bearing to buy we couldn't find anywhere to buy the same bearing we need we are gonna use the same one because it seems like it's fine it's working properly so we can still use this bearing then we installed the shaft and then we put some oil and when we try to turn the bearing we could feel like a little bump like yeah. we turn bump took like three as times assembling the entire system <laughs> to on the last second on the last image we showed you that's exactly when we found this bump and probably that is another reason why the system was making noise because a tiny bump when you spin one turn is one thing but when you spin 1500 turns really quick that's a completely different thing I mean we could live like this but it's gonna be like tu, 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 tu. doesn't make sense we didn't swim that far to you know <laughs> die seeing the island right in front of us no so we decided to get the one that we found on the boat with the four holes and we decided to do like a housing around with a nipple to put some grease yeah this cover wasn't here we just custom made this cover because the difference in between this bearing and this bearing is that this is sealed this one had little holes for the grease to go inside and to leave the bearing and if we install without this cover we would just lose the grease and with this we are trying to get the system improve, improve the system <laughs> so basically now we are going to have a system that we actually going to have grease on the bearing and we are going to have a way of regreasing without taking everything apart the way it was installed before we had no option we just apply as much grease as, as we can and we assemble the whole thing and if we want to you know regrease we need to take the boat out of the water take the shaft off and redo the entire thing doesn't make sense yeah, yeah we are gonna spare you of seeing us assembling the whole thing again <laughs> yeah I, I mean like you saw too many times already so we're gonna skip this and go straight to the painting job so we can bring the shaft finally home and we can have a boat that floats ah this time we did some measurements to make sure the flanges are parallel and we also use the impact driver on the net to be sure it's right every single time we disassemble and assemble again we find something that we can do it better and now i think we got to the point that there is nothing we can fix i believe you have no idea the amount of work by the way it's working yeah by the way we need to thank Reginaldo Reginaldo is the guy that is helping us if you think we pay attention to details you have no idea <laughs> Reginaldo is so good with details and he has all the necessary tools all the proper way of doing things and the space on his shop is yeah. amazing that was amazing we learned so much in the past two weeks and that's thanks to Reginaldo thanks so much so let's go back to the painting work so yeah. enjoy it enjoy. <laughs>
It's finally here. The shaft is back in the boat. Of course, we did a mistake. <laughs> Always. We put the shelf in, our, in the wrong position. This is bow. <laughs> yeah, it would be much easier to put already on this, you know, <laughs> right side. Now we need to somehow turn around here, and that's a pretty tight spot. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? One, two, three, four. Are you ready for this? <laughs> What's going on? Fun part of the job. We want to take the excess old grease. The grease is not bad, but why not apply new one? So we're thinking on throwing these through the pipe. Yeah, your heart is the sun and it shines as it opens. Where your heart is the sun and it shines. Says it opens. Yeah, your heart is the sun and it shines as it opens. Where well, your heart is the sun and it shines as it opens. Yeah, your bones. These way. Shortcuts. <laughs> so now we need to install the O-ring here and then we need to take these tapes off. We might do some protection here so we don't scratch the pipe inside and we are pretty much good to go. What's this? This is black silicone, so we're gonna have like a gasket here, but liquid gasket. This is gonna dry and become a gasket, just to make sure any imperfection won't leak grease. I don't think it's gonna leak, but back in the days this was glue. Now instead of gluing, we're gonna create a gasket that I think is a better solution. Next step, let's try to see if we have enough grease inside of the system. Another tool we had on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have enough grease there. Now that this one is already full, let's do the new one, the one that we created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the bearing now. This is the O ring that's gonna hold the grease in place and not let the salt water mix with the grease. So this goes inside, and then this piece is slide with this gasket. But first we need to lubricate a little bit, just to make sure. This inside. So we are trying to follow the blueprint as close as possible. And on the blueprint says we should apply silicone in between this piece and this piece and all over this piece so we're trying to fill up all the gaps with black seed no worry we can take the excess off
did it! Finally! It's in place! After two weeks of work, a lot assembling of work, this and it's turning spinning wheel. It's perfect. This part is done. Now we just need to go inside. Now it's for real. That's the last step. <laughs> we are going to install the ground wire here. And we are also going to take one by one the bolts out. And we are going to put the washer in place and some thread lock to tie and hold the bolt in place. Let's do it. Yeah. For every morning that I rise And I am showered by your smiles, oh yeah For every night I got to kneel Tears dry out, clouds disappear, oh yeah Been the best part of my life That's it! We do have a boat that floats, finally! I'm proud. I'm really proud. This, even though it seems like a small project, that's something that took us a lot of studying to do that. And a lot of, you know, confidence building. We need to build confidence in order to properly do it. And I really believe the system... Check this out. But I have a... It's so good. I have um, something to tell you. Yeah. We still can't go in the water because we still need to connect these holes. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> but we're not going to do this today. Yeah, the only thing we need to do is to connect these holes to this. And then we can float. Yeah, she's <laughs> always honest. I'm, you know, I'm trying to pretend I'm cool and she doesn't let me. No, it's a joke. I forgot about that. But for today, I think that's it. We worked a lot today. It's It was so hot and then rain a lot and then so hot and then rain a lot. And that's, yeah. But... I think was a successful two yeah, weeks of mission. We yeah, I'm really, really, really proud of us. And I'm gonna answer one question that I'm 100% sure a lot of people are gonna comment on the comment session. Why didn't we replace this weird, different, crazy system for a standard seal, just like a Volvo seal or whatever, you can buy a brand new seal. And the reason for that is because there is a reason for this system. So. From here on, I think you guys saw already, is a cardan shaft, is a drive shaft. The propeller turns, spins, and then pushes the boat. But what pushes the boat, usually in a boat, is the support for the engine, because this pushes the engine, and the engine brings the boat together with the engine. In our case, it's a little bit different. This is the piece that transferred the load from the propeller to the boat. That means that the shaft is just giving rotations to the propeller, that's all. All the force is done here, and that's a really, really robust system. It's a really, really strong system. And another question we've been getting a lot is why not having the shaft straight from the propeller to the engine? Have you checked the angle of this? If, if the shaft goes straight, we would have a shaft right here. It's impossible. We need to have this angle here. And there is another thing. I don't we have a steel bolt, and this system doesn't allow any drip, leak, any yeah. drip of salt water inside the boat. Yeah, that's a really, really important thing because a lot of the systems are cooled with ocean water. Yeah. That means we would have salt water inside of here and we would have corrosion really soon. In this way, we have no salt water inside of the boat and not even inside of the tunnel. And that's just perfect because a metal boat, as soon as we have a little drip of water on the bilge, we're gonna get rust on the bilge and we don't want rust on our bilge. Check this out, it's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think for our case, I'm not saying it's the perfect system, but for our boat, I think it works really good. Yeah. And we decide to keep as it is. Maybe one day we'll change. Yeah, we already took two weeks to assemble this. <laughs> Imagine if we change something. It's not just two weeks of assembling, it's two weeks of learning. Yeah. yeah, that's what a lot of people don't see behind the scenes. Oh, you guys are slow, you guys are taking too long. We are taking our time. We are doing in our way. We are learning as we go. And that's the most important thing, because if you just hire someone to do quick, or if you do quick, you might not learn as much as if you take the time to properly yeah. do what you need to do. And to do it right. Yeah. That's it. Let's call up the week. Yeah. That's good. We see you guys next, next week. Monday. Yeah. See you guys next Monday. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? One, two, three, four.